guess what? There's more hypothalamic pituitary organ axes to talk about. And the next one, the thyroid. So the thyroid has functions in metabolism. You can survive without a thyroid, but you will be very cold and have pretty low metabolism. So the thyroid gland is um, all endocrine tissue. It's got some other cells we'll talk about with calcium regulation in a little bit. Right now, I wanna talk about its main function, which is the production of thyroid hormones. Thyroid is gland is located on the trachea, um, pretty small gland right around here. Um, you can see where that is on this lady here. And it is regulated by guess what? The pituitary gland. So here are our um, neurosecretory cells, our cells releasing neurohormone in the hypothalamus. They release different hormones. One they release is thyrotropin releasing hor hormone. Thyrotropin releasing hormone. It's a tropic hormone for um, the thyroid gland. TRH is released from the hypothalamus. That is going to cause the release of thyroid stimulating hormone. This is the hormone that directly stimulates the thyroid. TSH is going to stimulate the thyroid. So it's going to bind to receptors that are targeted by TSH. They're located on the thyroid gland, the cells of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is going to release hormones as well. That's these right complex pathways. The thyroid gland is going to release T3 and T4. These are the thyroid hormones. These hormones are gonna travel throughout the bloodstream. That's what hormones do. They're gonna target basically lots of cells. So the, here's one example, target cells. This, the target cells up until this point were very specific. TSH only targets the thyroid at least as far as I know. T3 and T4, lots, lots of target cells. Um, and what is this thing here actually? This isn't a cell. Um, let me actually draw it, here's the cell. Thyroid's able to enter into the cell through the transporters in the cell membrane that help it get through. And it's going to target, one of its large effects is on the mitochondria. This is how it alters metabolism it tell those, tells those mitochondria, do your thing. Let's have some metabolism here. Let's have some ATP production. And there's mitochondria in all of your cells, um, right? It's gonna affect a lot of cells. That's the basics. Let's see a drawn out stimulus and effect of this. So this is a, an example. We've seen these of a complex neuroendocrine pathway, one stimulus for thyroid hormone is cold exposure. So if you're cold, what do you need to do? Increase metabolism, right? Um, so that's a stimulus for this. Let's draw out the, where are all of these cells here? Well, this is going to be a sensory cell. Maybe this is a cell on the skin, maybe it's inside the body, whatever. It's sense detecting the cold. This is going to be an afferent or sensory signal that travels to the central nervous system. Where is this? This is going to be our hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is going to release TRH. TRH is going to target the anterior pituitary, which is going to release what? TSH, which is going to target what? the thyroid, which is gonna target what? Release thyroid hormone to target, target cells. The response is in the target cells is going to be to increase metabolic rate. That's going to address our problem, our cold exposure. Thyroid hormone is also gonna feed back to turn off the system. Notice here, it's got like endocrine one, endocrine two. I'm not picky about whether you call this a hormone or not. If you call this hormone one, two, three, that's fine as well. I don't care about numbers, just know what's what. Okay, so let's talk about, right? We've kind of done this pathway a bunch. 
let's talk about, see, where are we? Right here, the production of thyroid hormones when TSH binds. Um, it's actually a complicated process, believe it or not. And I'm not going to go through it in tons of detail, but um, I want you to know some basics about it. So first of all, we've got TSH coming in from the bloodstream. Here's our blood. TSH is coming in and is going to trigger this system here. How, so what is a system? How are thyroid hormones produced? Well, it happens in these cells right here. So let's zoom in to the, a section of the thyroid gland. And so you see how I'm drawing a section of that simple cuboidal epithelium that lines this section of the thyroid gland. So here are cells. Actually, I don't like those. Here are cells. They're very cube. Um, they're surrounding what actually is not labeled here. In the middle here, this is colloid. This is pink stuff. You'll see this in lab as well. These all have nuclei. And thyroid hormone is produced in these cells as well as within the colloid. So what's gonna happen is we are gonna have in the colloid, here's our colloid, something called thyroglobulin is produced in the colloid. What else does thyroid hormone need? Anyone know this? It needs iodine. You may have heard of your thyroid gland needing iodine. So iodine is going to come in from the bloodstream. What's really cool is iodine is actually co-transported with sodium. Why does sodium come into the cell? Down its gradient, there's a drive for sodium into the cell. So co-transported with sodium using that stored energy. Thyroglobulin plus iodine are going to form T3 and T4. T3 and T4 have different um, sizes. They're actually referred to the number and so they're chopped up differently. I'm not gonna go into more detail than that. This happens in the colloid and then the last steps of it actually happen in vesicles as this, these are going back out again. So these are going to be taken back up into the follicular cell here by, um, I guess this would be what we call it vesicular transport. And you don't really need to know this. The point is some stuff still happens within here to enzymes that finalize T3 and T4. So in the end, T3 and T4 go out to the bloodstream. It's actually a lot more details than that. I'm not going to expect you to know more. Um, it is in your book if you would like to know more. TSH is going to basically stimulate all steps in this process. So TSH can cause iodine to be uptaken more quickly. It can cause the chopping um, of this combination here to happen more quickly. Um, it can cause a production of more thyroglobulin, which is why go how goiters form, um, this overproduction, overstimulation of the thyroid gland. Um, so that's how TSH is gonna stimulate the production of thyroid hormones. T3 and T4 then go off in the bloodstream and do their thing. Let's look at that next. Okay, so we've got thyroid hormones coming in from the bloodstream. I'm uh, gonna draw the bloodstream. They're coming by, let's say, 
just going to buy this cell. Got some thyroid hormones. Let's just call it T3. It's going to go into the cell. How does it do that? Well, it's hydrophilic, so it can't just pass through the cell membrane, but there is going to be a protein, a transporter that allows it to come in. It's gonna go inside the cell because its actions are inside the cell. So it's going to act, when once T3 is in the cell, it's going to act on the mitochondria. It's also going to go into the nucleus and act as a transcription factor for DNA. First, it's got to bind to its protein, right? I didn't really say that part. Um, let's add the protein. It's got a receptor, right? Hormones have to bind receptors to have actions. The receptor could either be in the cytoplasm. Let's just draw some around here, right? There's, there's more than one. These are our T3 receptors, thyroid hormone receptors. There might be one in the nucleus. So when thyroid hormone, let's make thyroid hormone pink here coming into the cell through that, through that protein. When it binds to its protein, it's gonna have some action. So that action could be to increase ATP production. It could be to increase gene expression, probably metabolic proteins. The result of all this is increased metabolism and it's gonna warm up your body. And that's through mitochondrial effects as well as changes in gene expression.